Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Backyard Buckets, and the selection show is in less than 24 hours. So today we're talking about three teams that could mess up your bracket. Now, all these teams should win round one, and there's a couple teams in here that could go really deep in this bracket, but I think it's going to be tough for all three of these teams to make it to the Sweet 16. So we're going to talk about these three guys here today. Um, if you have, of course, any arguments or anything, make sure to go down to the comment section. Let's debate, uh, because obviously... You know, people can have different opinions. Let's go ahead and start it out here with team number one, and that is going to be the Duke Blue Devils. Coming off of a loss against my favorite team, NC State. Um, they are current three seed, which I don't know. I don't know if I like that at all. Um, this Duke team I don't think is better than last year's Duke team. I mean, maybe a little bit, but they won zero games in the ACC tournament, which really hurts them, and Caleb Foster is in question. Uh, if he will be able to play in the March Madness Tournament. I mean, this is a vital piece to their team, a guy that's averaging about eight points, two assists, on 41% shooting from the field on three attempts. He really helps space the floor for them. He's that other floor spacer along with Jared McCain, who another, you know, really, I mean, should have been probably ACC Rookie of the Year. Um, 13 and a half points a game, five rebounds, 46% shooting from the field, 40% from three. But right now, if you're facing against Duke, if you take him out of the game, you win because he's their only real threat from downtown. Now, they have some other guys that are really scoring. Um, they have two good guards with Proctor and Roach. Proctor hasn't impressed me as much this year, but Roach has had the best season of his career by far. He's their senior leader. He's their experienced guy. He's been to the Final Four. He's averaging 14 points, three assists, 48% shooting from the field, 44% from three on three attempts. So, you know, you got Jared and then... Roach doesn't really shoot that many threes. Only three attempts. He got flipped down low. Just so thankful he could come back fully healthy from that gruesome knee injury he suffered at Wake Forest. 17 points, 8.2 rebounds for him, 1.6 blocks. He does shoot at 51% from the field, but 35% from three. I'd rather see him operate down low. Yes, occasionally he can step back, but their biggest weakness is that they have to play somebody at all times. They can't shoot the three ball at all. Sean Stewart, the five-star freshman, has attempted zero three-pointers so far this year. And the guy that is ahead of him, Mark Mitchell, well, he's attempted about 1.4 per game, and he's shooting a whopping 28% from three. You don't even really have to guard him on the perimeter, and that's what NC State did to beat them. Um, North Carolina kind of exposed that, and they lost at Wake Forest. So they've lost three of their last six games. Never good to be on a cold streak heading into March Madness. In the Ken Palm, they're 8th overall with the 7th best offensive rating and the 26th best defensive rating while they are 71st in strength of schedule. So overall, you know, I like I like Duke to get to maybe the Sweet 16. After that, I don't like them very much at all. And, you know, if they do face a tough 12 or 13 seed, depending on how far they drop, they could be toast. Kansas currently is a 4 seed and looking at their last stretch of games, it has not been good. They've lost their last two games by a combined 50 points, and they have lost four of the last five heading into March. That is a travesty. And really, other than Houston at home, who have they beaten as of late? Oklahoma will be a tournament team probably. I mean, they're on the bubble right now. Kansas State will not be a tournament team. Texas is on the bubble as well. I mean, it, it's been a tough stretch for Kansas down the road. They've you know, been playing with Lance McCuller in and out of the lineup, which is obviously tough. That's your best player. He's averaging 18.3 points per game, six rebounds, four assists, 1.5 steals on 45% shooting from the field. He does so much for this Kansas Jayhawks team, but missing him is going to be huge. They do have a good one-two duo down low in Hunter Dickinson and KJ Adams, a nice high-low look occasionally, and look at this, right when I say it, you know, they love to go high-low to Hunter Dickinson, who's averaging 18 points a game, 11 rebounds, 1.5 blocks, 55% shooting from the field, and that's a key theme here you'll see with this Kansas team. Their starting five is really good. KJ Adams, 12.4 points, 4.5 rebounds, 3.1 assists, 60% shooting from the field, but I'm really worried about their depth. They have an elite point guard in Dewan Harris Jr., who is great on the defensive side of the ball as well as being a facilitator. 8.3 points, 6.3 assists, 1.5 steals on 45% shooting from the field for him. So overall, I like the starting five, but the bench is just such a question mark. Um, they, they also have Johnny Furphy and Nick Timberlake. Those are their other scorers other than the four guys we just talked about um, who combined for 12 points and five rebounds. So they've got like six guys that average over – no, they have five guys averaging over five points a game. In Ken Palm, they're 22nd overall with the 64th ranked offense, which scares me. 10th defense is solid, um, and they have a really tough strength schedule, of course, playing in the Big 12. But they are 330th 
in three-point makes, which also worries me. And the depth is just really scary, which, which is why I'm staying away from them this March, you know, to go on a deep run. With that being said, let's take a quick break here. Make sure to like button and leave me a comment down below if you are enjoying the March Madness content. This is the place to be if you're trying to fill out your bracket, win your bracket group. Hit that subscribe button, like we said, turn on the post notifications so you can see all of the March Madness content. And with that being said, let's go ahead and continue on looking at Team 3. And this is my hottest take, Arizona. Okay, don't look. I mean, yes, a little bit of recency bias with last year's team, but they are 5th in Ken Palm, 8th offensive rating, 11th defensive rating, and 24th strength of schedule. The big thing you like to see there is that defensive rating really improving. And again, Arizona, like I said, this is my hot take. You know, this could be a team that gets bounced first weekend or could go to the Final Four. There's a lot of different outcomes for them. It just depends on their draw. They have eight guys averaging six or more points per game, which is absolutely massive. And like I said, it all depends on the draw. This is a team that could go deep. This is a team that could get deed up in the first round and struggle with, like, the 16 seed. Uh, they are eight, or they have Caleb Love leading the show, 18 points a game, four and a half rebounds, three and a half assists, 42% shooting from the field. And then they have Pele Larson and Kyle, Kylan Boswell as two other scorers in the backcourt. Boswell averages about 10 points, 3.6 assists, and 1.4 steals on 39% shooting from three, uh, about four attempts per game. And then you have Pele Larson, who is, you know, he's been there a while. He's a senior leader. He's averaging 13 points a game. Um, 3.6 assists, 4.1 rebounds, 43% shooting from three on three attempts. So not a lot of volume, but very, very good efficiency for him. Does a little bit of everything for this Arizona team. You got Umar Balo down low, 13 points a game, 10 rebounds, and one block. He's their center. They got good guards. They got good interior presence. And they have a much improved defender. This has probably brought their defensive rating up so much. Just adding Keisha Johnson, who brings the clamps. Uh, he's averaging about... 11.6 points, 5.7 rebounds, 2 assists, 1 steal, 1 block. So you see all the ways that Arizona can hurt you. They also have guys off the bench that can hurt you like these guys pictured here. And then comparing them to last year, which of course is the team that lost to Princeton in the first round, they were 10th in offense, 39th in defense. This year they're top 11 in both categories. So again, this is a team that as long as they don't get a terrible matchup, I like. But this could be a team to... You got to have your flags raised about the squad, if that even makes sense. I might have just made that up. Anyways, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I probably pissed a lot of people off with this video, uh, but if you agree with me, let me know down in the comment section below. If you disagree, let me know. Uh, let's talk about it. You know, that's, you know, the best way to talk things over down in the comment section below about March Madness. Who are your some of your uh, favorites? Who are some of your teams that you don't think will go very far? Leave it all down in the comment section below. And with that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Make sure to like button and hit that subscribe button if you are enjoying the March Madness content. We'll have you know a video out a day here this week in preparation for the tournament to begin. So with that being said, thanks so much for watching today's video.